Of all hipsters, flipsters, and finger popping daddies and groovy chicks, I'm your alter to dominant ego man. You can call me Mr. Ego if you like. And uh, welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. Well, you know, the KH, he doesn't like me telling stories about him. But anyway, years ago, he was in this jazz band, you know, and they were playing, and there was a drummer's name was Fred. Well, Fred couldn't keep up with the up tempos. They'd be playing up tempos, and Fred was always dragging the beat or playing behind the beat. So finally, the KH and his buddy, they went up to the leader and they said, well, you got to get rid of Fred. You got to fire him because, you know, we can't, we can't play with him. He's always dragging the beat and playing behind the beat and everything. So the leader said, well, I, I don't want to do that because Fred is very sensitive. He's made, maybe take it really hard, you know. They said, well, it's either him or us, you know. So finally, the uh, leader relinquished and he had to fire Fred. Well, you know what happened? Fred got so upset. He went down into the subway and he jumped behind a subway train. Now, wait a minute, that doesn't sound quite right to me. Oh, here comes the KH. I got a split. I'll see you. Bye-bye. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Jazz Ranch. I'm glad you joined me. And I'm sorry about the alter-dominant ego man. You know, he's back from Newark. He's here haunting us with his jokes. Although I think that one's kind of funny. At any rate, I'm going to continue now. I have a special program for you that is going to show you some chords that I heard played by Oscar Peterson, and they fit a, there are dominant seventh chords that have been altered and fit into a pattern that is diminished, a diminished chord pattern or a diminished scale pattern. I think they're really great sounding. I've heard a number of pianists use these, and I wanted to show them to you. So here we go. I'm going to start out by showing you some really cool sounding chords, chord voicings that Oscar Peterson uses that are built on dominant seventh chords, and I call them altered dominant chords, altered dominant seventh chords. And I use these particular voicings on the song Wave in a recent video. Now Wave goes like this, it, we're in the key of D major. Starts out on D major, then it goes to a B flat diminished. Like that, resolving to an A minor nine. Now on the B flat diminished, I revoice the harmony so it sounds like this. Of the chords now those are really built on a dominant seventh chord they're really cool sounding I think they're great sounding chords and I want to show you how they work now the thing that's interesting about this tune is in D major and he wants to approach the five chord the A but make it minor so that it moves in by two five one into the four chord in major so what he uses is a B flat diminished. So he's approaching it from a diminished chord above above the A minor nine. So it doesn't function like a five five of A. However, it doesn't matter. We can still use those voicings. So I want to now break these down for you in three families: the C family, the F family, and the G family, because those are the easiest ones to understand. And um, you want to watch my videos on diminished chords and the families of them if you haven't watched that, so you'll understand this better. So here we go now. I'm going to start out with the G family, the dominant seventh of C. These voicings are built on a G7 altered chord or a dominant altered chord. On the first one, it's a G7. But so now, if you look at them, they're actually sharp nine voicings. But the first one now, if you build it on a G, has the flat nine, a sharp 11 in it. The second one has the flat nine up here, and the 13th here, and the flat seven there. And the next one has uh, flat nine there, and the 13th, and so on. And the last one has the third and the sharp nine up there. See, so they're different. They're parallel because they're moving in, in, in minor thirds, which is a diminished pattern. And then you can play them in the, just the left hand with one hand, I mean one note in the right hand with three notes in the left hand, or you can play them with two notes each, like you can play them like this with two notes each. First one was this one, right? So now you can play that like this with the two, two notes in each hand, or you can play them with three notes in the, left, in the right hand like this. That's maybe the easiest way to learn it, but I learned it in the left hand, so that's the way it's comfortable for me. So now they overlap 
into uh, the different yeah. keys. But anyway, going back now, like you see, all these are sharp nines. Like if I started out here, that's a sharp nine. Like we'll say that's the major third, and this is the sharp nine up there. So that's a B flat sharp nine and so on, it goes up in minor thirds, a D flat sharp nine, next one would be up in thirds, that'd be the E sharp nine, and then next one would be the G sharp nine, right? So they're sharp nine voicings, but we're not using those notes as roots, we're using just a G as a root, see? So now you have all this, this is, this is pretty fascinating stuff. So I'm not gonna show you how to play it in three positions. Now I've written these out for you in three key in three the three essential keys C F and G. Now, with, when you combine all the families, you you have all the possibilities. We have the twelve dominant seventh chords altered. You have the twelve keys and all the and the three families of which four have four chords in each family. So everything is covered, and it only takes uh, believe it or not, it only takes two pages to do this. So. It's so extraordinary because I haven't really written everyone out for you. You have to figure it out on your own, but this will give you a good challenge. Now, you can play these with the left hand voicing, taking the three notes, and the right hand taking the, the one note, or you can play them in such a way that there's two notes in each hand. And I, This is not the way that I play it, so I probably can easily make a mistake on this. Like I actually got it right. So there it is with two hands, and then with the one hand, which may be actually the easiest for many of you, in other words, the chord is all here, and the bass note is here. So the three notes are in the right hand, and it goes like this, or that's like that. So now again, that may be easy, easier for you, you see. So that's, now let's look at it again, just to review. That's a, put the root in so you have that's a G7 with the sharp 11 and the flat 9 the next one is a G13 with the flat 9 up there next one is flat 9's down here fifth root third and then the last one has the sharp 9 in other words the third the seventh and the flat 9 and then it resolves to the C6 9 so you see that's pretty fascinating and then you can do these in in a descending manner and I'm going to show you that next. Continuing now the sun has come in on the keyboard because we're on the water here and the sun comes in based on the clouds and comes out of the clouds and now we have sun on the keyboard so how about that. Instead of going through all the keys like you know the C family, F family and G, G family which is going to be tedious and boring to you I'm going to have them written out on a chart and you can look at this but I'm going to give you three examples in each of the uh, uh, you know keys centers. Um, first one is I'm going to be doing the, an example in, in 251 into C which is D minor 7 I went like, like that. So there you have it. Now I can play it. You see that? So that's the way Oscar play, would have played it. Like that maybe. He would have done something embellishing it. But that's, that's the sound. I mean, that's an Oscar Peterson sound. It's, it's really an intellectual thing, but it's also an ear thing. If your ears can hear it, then you will understand it. But, but you can see it's an intellectual thing because it really is symmetrical. It's, it, it relates to all those symmetrical videos I've done and the symmetry of the uh, dominant seventh chords and the diminished scale. That diminished scale is symmetrical. Now we're going to go into the second example. On the next example on, on wave, we have this. That's a B-flat diminished chord, but now really, what is it? If we took the upper extensions, like B-flat, it has a uh, D-flat, an E, a G. Now, so it's really a C7, right? With a B-flat in the bass. It's that, so like it's a C, the C, the family is a C7, so that's why we get this. So now we're in the C family of the dominants. 
So now that means that we're going to have, let's analyze it. Okay, that's the C7 sharp 9, right? Third, flat 7, sharp 9. Next one is uh, this one of a minor third. Fifth, sharp 11. Whoops, flat 9, sharp 11. The next one is 13. There it is, flat 9. And there you have flat nine, fifth, thirteen. Yeah. See, so that B flat diminished chord now relates to the C family. So now to use these chords fluently, you have to incorporate them into your technique in some way that that works for you. If you whatever position, whether it's the left hand technique or the right hand or the combination of the two. I like the left hand technique, I, that's the way I learned it. So like that, so that's two if I wanted to see. Let's try it into uh, E flat maybe. Like that, you see. And then maybe let's try it into G. Let's try that. Let's try it into A flat. I'll just do uh, some ad libs here. B flat. Signing off. Thanks for joining me. Please write to me. I love to hear from you. Leave me a comment, critique, or feedback of any kind, and I will be sure to try to answer it if you give me some time. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, God rest his merry soul, swing loose. We'll see you around the block and see you next time around. Bye-bye.